Don't just get caught up in the individualistic society that we live in where it's like, well, you know, um, you know, two and a half kids, you know, two dogs, a cat and a house is what we're living for. That's not what you're living for. Like we need to live for bigger things and we need to give our kids a bigger vision for what to live for. And in order to do that, we have to, in some cases, pull ourselves back yeah. and interrupt the cultural narrative and the cultural pressures that are being put on us to survive so that we can look at our family and go, I want to see you so I can help you thrive. You are listening to the Famous at Home podcast with Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Because when it's all said and done, we all want to know that we were famous at home. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. I am so excited to welcome you to our very first series this summer called On Becoming Great Parents. Each of the five episodes coming out in the next five weeks will be a series on becoming great parents. And there will be a PDF download for you in the show notes that you can uh, download and enter into if you have a group of parents that you're listening to these episodes with, if it's you and your spouse, if it's a small group, We encourage you to find others that you can listen to these episodes with, share them with others, and then use the download as an opportunity to discuss how you're growing as a parent. And for this one, today's episode is the four pillars of emotional health in kids. Four pillars of emotional health in kids. Before we jump into this episode, if you did not listen to last week's episode on being the solution Uh, and, And the updates that we have with Famous at Home, I would love for you to go back and listen to that because that introduces what we're doing this summer and then introduces the rebrand that's coming up this fall that we are super excited about. And so go back and listen to that one if you haven't already. That's the, it sets the stage for these Uh, series that we are creating and cultivating here at Famous at Home. And so I would love for you to check that out. Uh, as you check that out, I just want to send a couple reminders. These will also be in the show notes. If you're interested in journeying on a very fun, joyful discipleship journey with me, if you're a man and you want a uh, husband, father, and you want to journey together in discipleship in leading well, those around you, uh, fill out the interest form there. Uh, we are cultivating and currently developing behind the scenes a discipleship journey, a community that we're going to be building. And I would love if you're interested uh, to sign up, tell us a little bit more about what you would love to see in that as we develop it because it's coming very soon. Tender and Fierce, Christy's launching another one starting August 7th. Uh, sign up is in, it's now out. Sign ups are happening in the show notes, make sure you go and register. The first iteration of that was phenomenal, has been phenomenal. Christy's in the process of finishing that. And you can take a look at that on the website and or listen to last week's episode to learn more. Without further ado, I want to introduce you this week to the four pillars of emotional health in kids as we begin session one of five on becoming great parents. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. Today we are talking about children and emotions, which is one of our favorite topics. What is the state of mental health with our kids and how can we encourage and champion our kids today as parents? Because we as parents are the primary stakeholders of our kids and you know, um, I think we're the primary disciplers. I think we're the primary stakeholders. I think we're the, we are the ones that help navigate who they become. I mean, the very first thing that you talk about when you go to a therapist's office is you talk about what, what was your, what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up with mom and dad? And I think so often, you know, I joked with Christy early on that we uh, need to create a therapy piggy bank because we know our kids are going to need therapy. So we might as well start at least one thing we could do is just save some money uh, so that they have here, here, here kids, here's your therapy piggy bank for when you need to talk about mom and dad. But uh, all joking aside, like I, I, I love what Kurt, Dr. Kurt Thompson says. He wrote a great book called soul of shame and I just, I love him, but he said, there's only one way to not mess up your kids. And, you know, you're sitting on the edge of your seat like, oh my gosh, like if, what is that one way? Like, I want to know that one way. Well, if you want to know that one way, stick around. We'll tell you a little bit later in the episode. We'd just love for you to listen to the entire episode. (laughs) 
<laughs> today. No, I'm just That's kidding. Not fun. <laughs> so, the, 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 but but he said the the one way to not mess up your kids is don't have them. So, you know, well, we already, live in a fallen we've already, world. Uh, Cross that option off the list. Yeah, we've already so, crossed that option off the list. But so. yeah, we really want to talk about this because we've had so many conversations lately with just so many wonderful, intentional parents, um, school administrators, uh, ministry leaders that you know minister to, to kids, and we are all seeing and concerned for the effects of what what is happening right now in culture, what's happening with screens what's happening just with the, the things that our kids, these kids growing up right now are facing and the effect on their emotional health. And we know that the stats don't look good. Um, and yet, and yet we have hope and yet we have God and yet we have solutions. Like we really do have resources. It's, I, I look at it as yes. Are we looking at more depression and anxiety and epidemic levels than we've ever seen in the course of history? Yes. And yet to me, what if we look at that as actually like the precursor and the motivation to actually live differently? I I think what I've seen so drastically maybe in these last years is, you know, like at least I grew up in the church and I grew up, you know, hearing like wide is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life. And, and you like hear that, but at the same time, like, culturally I think like you could kind of just roll with culture like I was public school educated Josh was too and like I turned out pretty good I mean I had great parents but I really felt like I I was okay I was okay to go along with most of the way culture raised kids the way you know the schools were and um I don't know like I I chose to like not drink and do drugs in high school I did do that but like otherwise I pretty much looked like every other kid, you know, in a lot of ways, but realizing now, I don't know that our kids have that choice. It is such a marked, like the narrow way is so drastically different. Well, and what's different about us too is, you know, we didn't have social media. So I mean, when I grew up in school, like, I mean, you, you, you went to school to be around friends. You don't, you can be around friends and you can be bullied in the comfort of your own bedroom now. And, and I think that's the, that's the scary component of it is our kids are being exposed. They're always exposed. So they're not just exposed in school. They're also exposed in the comfort of their own bedroom. And that you, that to me is fuel on a greater fire. And then for us as parents too, adding to everything you're talking about in terms of screen time and, and, you know, the culture and things like that is what happens when you simply just have a child who you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. You alone as a parent are going, I want help because my child doesn't know how to label emotion. My child um, is explosive. My child um, doesn't have empathy or can't see into another human. And, you know, I I think there's there's a component of that that's very important because that's the felt need. That's the felt need as me as a dad is when I see something wrong with one of my children or I see something off in one of my children, forget about all the other cultural stuff. Right. The cultural stuff is fuel to the fire of something that's already going on in the heart of my son or daughter. And I want to make sure that as a parent, I'm entering into their world and I'm doing a really, really good job of making them feel safe, making them feel seen, making them feel valued. And I think those are the things we want to get at today is what are, if, if we could come up with pillars, like if there are these major yep. pillars, what really matters for our children's sake as it relates to our ability to step into their world for them to lay a, for us to lay a foundation for our kids, if you will, to lay a foundation for coping skills, to lay a foundation for mental health, to lay a foundation for resilience, to lay a foundation, resilience meaning their ability to bounce back when they hit trouble. Because we know in this world we will have trouble. Jesus says, take heart, uh, I have overcome the world, right? But how do we train our kids? How do we coach our kids? How do we live in an envi- raise our kids in an environment where they can learn to trust God, where they can learn to experience Jesus? But 
not only that, but then also to be able to manage their emotions in that, to be able to have that resilience, that bounce back factor when they do hit certain difficult circumstances, because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and how do we as parents come alongside them and train them for that? And so today, I just want to talk about, uh, we want to talk about what are some core pillars, if you will, to help us enter into our kids' world and prioritize their emotional health, their ability to grow emotionally and have that resilience. And of course, we're doing this on an episode today. So we're going to we're going to scratch the surface of this topic. But that's what my kids EQ and Kids EQ Academy is all about and we want to invite you to that. Uh, again, it'll be in the show notes today, but we start our coaching workshop and we go much deeper into some of these some of these topics and how how we can do that. But I think today the first one that I want to start with is I genuinely believe that it starts with emotional safety. So what does emotional safety look like? What does that mean? Um, Especially what does it mean practically uh, for our kids to feel safe? And and the word safe can, uh, that word has a lot of baggage with it. But I think what the word, if, if I could break this down into one simple phrase, it's that it's the posture from which we parent, not the techniques that matters most. So in other words, you know, a technique, I think we get so caught up on techniques in parenting. I got to discipline. What consequences do I do? What discipline strategies do I use? One technique that works today in one child isn't going to work on another child. And one technique that works today on the same child might not work tomorrow on that child, which means techniques come and go. The, the thing that should never come and go, it doesn't matter whether your kids are two or 12 or 22 or 52, is the posture from which we show up with them. And I think that posture really comes down to how well are we entering into their world in a loving way where we see them? Where we see them, and, and I like to use this phrase, is that it's love minus fear. Perfect love cast out fear. Uh, Dan Siegel, a top neuroscience researcher, actually says this in his research. Uh, in attachment, we want to be open to ourselves and enter our kids' world um, uh, in love without fear. Like we want to, and, and, the, and the secular research shows this, like enter having ourselves, feeling calm within ourselves, right? That requires us to be able to be calm. That requires us to be able to enter into our kid's world without making it about us, without getting defensive. But that means we have to take care of ourselves. But our ability to be able to be emotionally safe for our kids and enter into their world, enter into their hearts to go, buddy, what is happening? Or sweetie, um, something feels off. Do you want to talk about it? without trying to fix it, without trying to lecture it, but just to simply be there and listen. And I think safety, like that's, that is the name of the game, right? Like safety is what we are trying to cultivate. And yet I don't think sometimes we even know how to, like you just said, like, you know, it's love minus fear. Like that's the equation we put on it because it's almost hard to define it in another way. But I would say, you know, when it feels unsafe, Mm. that's, it's almost easier to identify what it's not. And so we get to sit with a lot of adults now, parents of kids and, you know, husbands and wives. And we hear the stories of what happened when they were a child, when they felt unsafe Mm -hmm. and they grew up in an environment that didn't feel safe. And so that felt like punishment that felt like rejection that felt like dismissing them or minimizing their emotions, or it felt like it just wasn't warmth. Like a secure attachment is that I'm able to extend my arms towards you and, and you to me, right? Where it's like, when I need you, I reach for you. When you need me, you reach for me. And when those things are hindered or there's, and I look, I think about screens, you know, we did this episode about screen time recently. And, you know, when you think about, when you think about that secondhand screen time and like, that just wasn't as much of a thing for us as kids. I mean, yeah, we had TVs, but we, our parents weren't glued to these phones in front of their faces. And you think about how that's communicating to us as kids. Um, and what that now isn't, you know, we're communicating to our children. It's like, though we are trying so hard to be attentive to our kids' needs, we're trying to attend to them. And that's what like my kids EQ is doing. 
a lot of like with this coaching, when we're working with the coaches, it's coaching them on the principles because you cannot teach a child emotional intelligence and emotional maturity when it is not modeled for them at home. Right, right. So, and I know that's a heavy statement, but that child cannot learn what is not modeled for them. And so a parent who is super dysregulated cannot regulate their child. And so we're, sometimes we're actually asking kids to do something that they cannot capably do because they've never seen it modeled. And that's why it matters so much how, you know, we talk about, we don't, you like to use the word parenting because it's really about who we're becoming as adults. Like if we are not kind and soft and yet stronger and wiser than our children and, and, and holding them in a way that says like, it's okay when you mess up, I'm here, but I will also instruct you on how to make it right when you do. We can't ever expect that our children will know how to do that for themselves. And so it really is this, you know, we've called it my kids EQ. We've even wrestled with that for so long because it's really so much more about it's about, about the, the family, family. <laughs> my family EQ. Yeah. And so we've wrestled That's with, right. you know, do we even relabel that? But, but all that to say is it's really us growing as adults and healing some of the stuff that we encountered. And that's valid. Like we, I've, I'm still walking through that healing. I think we will until we go home to be with Jesus. We're healing and then we can help others heal and we can help our children heal. But we're the ones that are giving them that safe foundation. And and I circle back to finish because Josh loves when we close loops, not when we open them. So if I'm, I'm get, did, Thank you. Did, did, you, did you, you like that? Me. I caught that. I saw you. You saw me. I saw you. I felt seen. Thank you. And, and that, um, even that, like just the value of seeing someone, he's sort of we'll saying that, that tongue in so cheek. Can okay. you not open that loop? Can sorry, you just sorry, clo- sorry. finish yeah. closing your other loop like yes. you were going to do? So safety is really the, it's, it's the absence of fear, as Josh mentioned, but it's an environment that we're cultivating. And those fears are, they can be anything from parental fears like, I'm afraid my yeah. child's going to turn out a certain way. I'm afraid that my child's never going to, you know, um, uh, be able to have empathy. I'm, I'm afraid that my child's never going to be able to have friends or good friends or whatever. That is. Like we tend, or it's not or smart pun- enough. Or punishment just- from a parent. Like I'm afraid I'm going to be punished for you know, yeah. but all I, these parental fears, which can I add, can I add like very start of this podcast, we talked about the landscape right now of mental health for children. That is a, like, that is a great fear that parents are carrying that like, I am terrified for my child because of the world that they're growing up in. And like, let's just pause to have some compassion right there. Because that, that is real. And that's why so badly we want to equip families with My Kids EQ and Kids EQ Academy because these are the tools that we all need so that we're not walking in fear, that we have full confidence that we, the Lord has a wonderful future for us and our children. And let me say this too. I think I'm this was not going to be a pillar. I'm making it a pillar because I oh, think it okay. is a pillar right this second. Right. I was I was going to go out of something else that Christy was saying that it our pillar kind of flowed, but I'm going to interrupt that pillar and and use this one. Is that I genuinely believe as families, as parents, perfect love cast out fear. Right. The Bible says that we were not given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So fear. Uh, it's talked about all over the place. Do not be anxious about what? Nothing, right? Do not worry about tomorrow. Today is enough trouble of its own. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When you, you've you got to be in the word. So I'm going to put a pillar in there that one of the pillars for us as as parents today in raising our kids to be emotionally and spiritually mature, the, the thing that sets this... Uh, emotional intelligence curriculum apart is that it's biblically based. Okay. So it's not just, it's research based and it's also biblically based. And I, I'm telling you the single greatest thing that keeps me from, from living in fear and exposing that to my kids is staying in the word of God bar none. And I, I, 
It's not being in the news. It's not having news on. It's not paying attention to what's going on in the world. Um, if you know, as my friend Jordan Rayner describes, like let your friends curate your news for you. If meaning, if if it's news that I need to be aware of, I'm gonna find out about it. And and everything else, I my soul can't carry that weight. If my soul is carrying that weight, guess who else is feeling it? My children are. And so. I'm telling you, we've got to be in the Word of God, and you and 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 I'm not saying this in a preachy. I know I'm sounding very preachy right now, but you got I, passionate about. I'm that saying one, this about I, conviction. I'm saying this yeah, with conviction. Yeah, yeah, you have to be in this hour. We have got to be in the Word. We have got to. I'm speaking this to myself. Um, there's nothing yeah. that has changed me more over the last year than making sure that I'm in the Word every single morning reading my bible and 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 receiving the love of the father because that's where the perfect love of his love for me casts out fear so that's pillar number two pillar number three i'm going to say is you know as christy mentioned earlier we don't like the word parenting very much Mm -hmm. because it 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 describes and we talk about this in our book famous at home a lot of this stuff we talk about in the book famous at home so if you want more and you want to go deeper that's another place to go is please go pre-order the book or not pre-order it but order the book famous at home it actually is out uh almost a year we'll be celebrating a year that it's been out here in may but um happen? i know it's crazy so oh. we, we'd love for you to go get a copy of that but in there we talk about you know we don't like the word parenting because it's a it, it really what we describe is that that's a We're trying to change our kids, basically, and you can't change anybody. But all of parenting research, you can sum it up with one primary conclusion, and that's that our kids become who we are. And so I would say the word becoming Mm -hmm. is a better word for this than parenting. And so my third pillar uh, that I want to describe today is what is it that you need to do as a parent to make sure that you're showing up as the best version of you for your kids, so how are you showing up for the best version of you for your kids so that you're not, as Christy was saying earlier, flipping your lid as you are not like for me that w- that's working out. Like I get up first thing in the morning and I work out. If I don't work out, I'm a different human than when I, than, um, than when I do. True and story. I show up differently with my family, mm-hmm. um, when I get to work out I and spend concur. time. So thank you. <laughs> I, that, that's a big deal to me. Working out's not as much, I mean, it's physical, but there's there's as much of an emotional component to that for me and mental health component to working out as as there is, as there is which I'm going to also say this because it, it's not necessarily a pillar, but it needs to be, is getting our kids outside, getting them exercise, getting them moving, getting them in the, you know, in, in your yard or in the woods or wherever you live, get them outside. Our, we live inside way too much as, as, as a culture. Anyway, I don't know what you wanted to say on that pillar, but no, I just, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I just, I think sometimes these pillars help to, to start to solidify or, or maybe clarify is a better word, clarify what feels so foggy and what feels so confusing. I think yeah, we want to simplify. We want this to, to like it's like literally we think of talking like a, t- a tool pack right like we tool a tool belt is the word i was looking for <laughs> tool pack, tool pack. <laughs> i really am a craftsman if you can't tell but a, a tool belt <laughs> that uh like a carpenter wears um ar- that we actually like hand like putting tools in your hands and that's the same language we use with the kids is like it's you are learning tools. You will use them for your entire life. But most of us were never taught these tools as children. And these are the tools that we want to also give you so that when we look at the world and it looks like it's burning and on fire and things are not looking good, we can have hope beyond hope and we can have right. victory. We can have, and we can have confidence that we are like, we don't have to be in fear for our children. We don't have to be in fear that they're going to, we're going to lose them or we're going to lose their mental health um, is going to go the way of their friends. It actually isn't. And I think that they will be the bright lights when it talks about like the city on a hill. I think those will be our children Mm -hmm. because they are grounded in the world. They are grounded in these pillars. They have been given these tools. They know what to do, even more so and I, I go to go back to what I said in the beginning. I know it looks bleak culturally, but
but I think this is when we've well, always seen the revival. Right this is when this we've is always it. seen the church rise excited. up. And it's like, this is what we've, we're putting into action, what we've believed all along. But I think it was easier for us to coast as kids. It was easier for our parents a good point. to coast as well. They didn't have to be quite so on and, um, they didn't know either to give us these tools. They didn't know how to regulate themselves. So how would they have known to give us those tools? We know now. We know because we live in a really sick world that we've had to face a lot of, we've had to help a lot of people that have really struggled. And because of that, we've gleaned all the right tools to use in order to do so. And I want to close this uh, with this last pillar because you brought it up and I'll just swing it back around to close. But yeah, and, and there's so much more to come with this. Gosh. We're going to be talking about this uh, on the podcast. Obviously, the workshop is coming up. Please take a look at the website uh, link there so that you can um, go get more information about that to, to sign up for the next workshop. But the last pillar that I have, so so the first one was emotional safety. The second one was get in the word. The third one is, um, we had three, but we I, I made four. Look at that in our time together. Um, <laughs> go figure. And then uh, the third one was uh, focus on who you're becoming. The fourth one is, is, and, and this is, this is one, it kind of goes along with what we talked about last week on, on screens, but, uh, be, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I want to make, it's being seen, but it's not that you are being seen. It's that you are seeing your kids. So it's like, we as a family, how are we as a family? How do my kids feel seen? How is Christy feel seen? How, how, and, and then how do I see as a father, as a husband, as I see my kids, as I see Christy, as I see myself and I see my own soul, how do I see us as a family unit and what God is calling us to? And this, so this seeing piece is so much bigger because it's not just do our kids feel seen. That's huge. We have to make sure that our kids feel seen. That's the pillar. But when our kids feel seen, we give them purpose greater than themselves. And kids need a purpose greater than themselves. They need meaning. Where, where we go arise when we don't, you know, without vision, people perish. And so how do we give our kids purpose and vision? It's by helping them feel seen. And so I just, I genuinely believe for each of us, that always goes back to us as parents, who are we becoming as adults so that we can sit with our kids and that we can see them not in fear, but we can see them and we can ask them questions and we can uh, really encourage them in the way that God is leading them to go. Proverbs yeah. 22, 6, lead them in the way they should go, not the way we want them to go as parents. But how do we see them? Helping them feel seen. That means we pay attention to the projects they're doing in school. That means we pay attention to uh, you know, we talk about schooling one child, one year at a time. And, you know, whether you public school, homeschool, private school, you know, hybrid model, co-op, whatever that looks like for you, what do your kids need? Mm -hmm. Don't just get caught up. Don't just get caught up in the individualistic society that we live in where it's like, well, you know, um, you know, two and a half kids, you know, two dogs, a cat and a house is what we're living for. That's not what you're living for. Like we need to live for bigger things and we need to give our kids a bigger vision for what to live for. And in order to do that, we have to, in some cases, pull ourselves back yeah. and interrupt the cultural narrative and the cultural pressures that are being put on us to survive so that we can look at our family and go, I want to see you so I can help you thrive. And that just requires us a little bit more to put down our phones. It requires us a little bit more to maybe start thinking about the way that we're living our lives a little differently so that we can enter into our kids space and go, I see you. What's the project you're working on? Who are your friends? Who are you hanging out with? What are you struggling with? Do you want to do public school next year? Do you want to do homeschool next year? Do you want, what do you love about it? What do you don't love about it? Right? So that we're not making the decisions for them, but that we're inviting them into those conversations. I think that's just, that's the big component of it. So. Yeah. In a nutshell, I think mm -hmm. these, and I think these are like the four beginning pillars. We just want to give you. Yeah. This is the so, start. Yeah. But it is so on our hearts. And I just, I just want to say like, I, we hear all of you as, as moms and dads who just are. And if you're listening concerned. to this podcast, you're probably doing an amazing job. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. I, like there's like. But, but just, just to recognize we do you're feeling the culture. Right. And so it makes sense if you're, for your concern for your kids, mental health, your, their emotional, 
um, resilience, just their ability to withstand. And that totally makes sense. And also like you're in the right spot. I think yeah. we all are in the right spot, not just in history, um, but also as a community. You were called like, to this hour. You were called yeah. to, for this. And so the Lord will equip you. And I pray that, you know, the tools that we've, with my Kids EQ and Kids EQ Academy, that they're get to be a part of family stories because I know um, this next generation matters. So I want to leave you with this real quickly. If you have any questions or topics that you want us to talk about related to this, please go to famousathome.com slash podcast. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, put in the topic, and let us know what you want us to talk yep. about. We will okay. talk about any questions you have. We'll do some Q&A here on the podcast. And until next week, keep in mind that the greatest red carpet you will walk is through your front door. Keep being famous at home. We love you. <laughs> <laughs>